Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm Jack Curry, and we've got an exciting guest for you today, and you know this gentleman very well. He's the greatest closer of all time. He's the only player in the history of Major League Baseball to be voted into the Hall of Fame unanimously. And he was one of my all-time favorite interviews as a reporter. Mariano Rivera joins us today. And Mariano, how are you doing? How's your family doing? Jack, thank you, buddy. Uh, we are doing excellent. I mean, other than staying in the house and sitting in, uh, you know, we've been in every toilet. We have, we've been in every bedroom in this room, every chair in this room. And, and uh, although we have a, a good-sized house, I mean, it's still, man, it's crazy. But it's good, you know what I mean? Because, Jack, uh, uh, we have a chance to share with the family, talk with the family, I mean, enjoy the family. And uh, doing that, uh, I think that we're also saving life. So that's great. Everything is good, Jack. Everything is good. I'm happy to hear that. And the saving lives part that you mentioned, that's obviously vital. Stay home, stay safe. Now, you were born in Panama. We all know that. But you're, you're adopted homeland, so to speak, or your second home is New Rochelle. And Mariano, in March, New Rochelle received national attention because a, a cluster of people with the coronavirus. How scary was that for you, your family, and all of your friends that you have in New Rochelle? And how have people come through that? Well, Jack, that was a, that was a tough uh, month in, uh, in uh, news when we heard about that. It was, it was devastating because I mean, uh, that's basically, uh, basically our home. And uh, knowing that uh, the town got infected with that coronavirus, it was, it was hard, Jack. You know, we had to bring confidence and, and, and people start wondering and we had to bring peace in the middle of, of of tough times. Mariano, you did something recently that I think we all should do, and I don't think it could happen enough. You sent a message to White Plains Hospital, thanking the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, everyone in the medical community who has helped people and who has been on the front lines. What inspired you to want to do that message? Jack, uh, I remember where 2011 happened. I mean, uh, 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 201, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, September 11 happened. And uh, it was a hard time for New York. And uh, we just been there with this something. Just our presence being there. And our game, you know, thank God that we have the game and we're continuing and we can bring some joy or peace, or, or, or times of, of, of reflection in situations like that. Now, and this time, our heroes are doctors, nurses, medical staff, EMS, uh, firefighters, uh, police, law, law enforcement. Those are our heroes. But most of all, most of all is doctors, uh, uh, nurses, and all medical staff, you know, they're leaving their families, you know, to come and, and put their life in danger, to keep us safe, you know, to do the best they can do. And these people don't give up. That, those are the real heroes. That's why it inspired me, not only White Plains, but uh, all the, all the, uh, uh, Hospitals, they have done doing the same thing that the, the White Plain Hospital doing, the uh, Columbia Hospital doing, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, hospitals uh, all over the world doing, Jack. And for that, you know, we have friends. You know, I have medicals, I mean, doctors, friends, you know, all the doctors for the New York Yankees, you know, in, in, in the Presbyterian Hospital. They all take care of us. You know, the people that really care about us, those are the real heroes. And that's why I decided to do 
those chats and, and, and thank them because I mean, if think about this, if they don't put their life in danger, I mean, they know it's a matter of the life or death, you know? And if they don't do that, who would do it? Yeah, where will be? So, I mean, that's why part inspired me, Jack, to do that. I love how passionately you speak about calling those folks the heroes because they truly are the heroes in this situation. And I, I think we all recognize that. And I, and I hope that message that you just offered up resonates with people. And we throw that word hero around a lot, Mariano. I'm gonna make a little bit of a transition here to another hero because it applies to you. April 15th was Jackie Robinson Day in Major League Baseball. And normally everyone would have number 42 on. Now granted, there were no games that day, but Major League Baseball still celebrated his memory and his legacy. You were the last player who wore number 42 as a major leaguer. How meaningful is that, was that, for you to have that connection with Jackie? Jack, uh, to me, Mr. Jackie, I, I, had to, I had to go a little bit back, so I hope we have time. We have plenty of time. Keep going, Mo. Yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> I wanted to uh, people understand, and because when I got number 42 at the beginning, I didn't know much about it. As a matter of fact, I didn't know anything about Jackie Robinson. As a matter of fact, someone asked me about Jackie Robinson. I said, who's Jackie Robinson? You know, that's how naive I was when it came to the game because I just love to play the game of baseball. I didn't care about statistics or things that happened. No, I just wanted to love the game and play the game that I love since I was six years old, boy. All right, so now when I heard that the, the, the number was getting retired because Jackie Robinson, now it caught my attention. I said, no, no. I have to learn, I have to know who this man is or do, who this man was and what he has done for baseball because baseball doing something major, retiring the number all over major league baseball. There's only one Jackie Robinson. So I learned, Jack, and I, when I learned, I was like, wow, you know, this is something special because and then I had the opportunity to carry his number. And then when every player was uh, retiring or, or leaving the game, I mean, then all of a sudden I was the one, the only one left. He got more heavier and more responsible because now I had to carry his legacy. And I wanted to make Mr. Jackie Robinson so proud of what uh, he did, that we were carrying that legacy, you know. And... Uh, and uh, for me, it was a challenge. And uh, at the same time, uh, opportunity to, uh, to, carry, to carry his legacy. And I uh, thank God that I was able to do that with my teammates. You know? and, uh, and at the end, I think we did right. I think we did right. And uh, I was so proud of that because, I mean, uh, what he did for me and for many others as minority. To me, he was number one and uh, continue will be. I mean, that's the reason why in April 15th we have that. Everybody, everybody will use that number for, for one. You only see number 42. That's cool. Mariana, you have such a, a rich history with the Yankees. Last week I was talking to Jorge Posada, and Jorge said, Mariano was the easiest pitcher for me to catch because for most of his career, I just put down a one. He said later he, he worked the two-seamer, the stinker in, so I had a one and a two. But did you know when you were on the mound that you were making life easier for a catcher like Jorge? Oh, I know. We always knew. As a matter of fact, <laughs> most sometimes, I mean, he, had a, he didn't put sign. I was just, I'm going to throw the ball. You catch the ball, Georgie. Because, I mean, we knew. I mean, everybody knew. The whole world knew that where I was throwing. The only thing that we had to make sure were the locations. But uh, but uh, even though the players knew it was coming, you know, the only thing that I didn't do, Jack, was tell them verbally, hey, guys, it's coming. I would say 90, 99% of the time, they knew it was a cutter. You know, I mean, uh, the only thing, with the one thing that we know, yes, and uh, uh, I respect uh, Georgie and uh, all the catches that I have because, I mean, those guys always try to make me better. But, yeah, for them, I believe, it was, I was easy for them to catch because, I mean, I didn't bounce the ball. 
I wasn't wild throwing the ball all over the place. They just sit there and the ball got to them. So that was good. When you look back, Mariano, at coming up in the minor leagues and you're with Jeter and Jorge Posada and Andy Pettit are, are around the same time. Bernie's a step or two ahead of you guys. Did you allow yourself way back when to think and to dream about what all of you could accomplish as a group? I mean, Jack, I mean, I knew that uh, when we were in double A, then triple A, I knew that we had something special. You know, because you have a core of players, including Bernie Williams, core of players that uh, it were from the home, from the house, uh, born in the uh, uh, organization. And uh, if we stay in the big leagues for at least five years and plus, I think that we will, be, we will have something special because those players were raised the right way. Mm -hmm. It was about winning. It wasn't about individual. It wasn't about how much money I will make or, 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 or who I am. It was about just together how many championships we can win. And that was the beauty about those players. You know, there wasn't nothing, no ego. It wasn't not, nothing like, man, I have to be the man. I have to be the guy. If not, you know, I have to go some players to be the guy. No, it was players that was raised uh, with the mentality to win, the preparation to win, the everything that you have within yourself to win. And that's where uh, uh, we uh, we accomplished job because, I mean, yes, definitely, it takes a group of guys with the same mentality to accomplish what we accomplish. And uh, yes, I mean, uh, I knew that we were special, but I didn't, I didn't know that special. Mariano, you pitched for the most successful franchise in baseball history. And if you go decade by decade, generation by generation, people will talk about Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and Mickey Mantle and Joe DiMaggio and Yogi Berra. When people talk about the 90s into the 2000s, it's going to be you, Pettit, Posada, Jeter, Bernie Williams, throw Paul O'Neill, David Cohn, all of the other pitchers who were part of that. How proud are you to be part of such an amazing Yankee legacy? Yeah, I'm extremely proud about, uh, about what we accomplished. Why? Because, I mean, it wasn't easy. It wasn't like it was given to us. No, it was a... Uh, uh, a hard work and dedication, determination, passion, love, and a uh, and, uh, uh, set mind to accomplish, to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. You know, so I mean, I'm extremely, extremely uh, uh, proud of what we accomplished because again, you know, it's the same thing what uh, Mickey and, and, and Joe DiMaggio and, and, and Babe Ruth and Gary did. You know what I mean? Hey, they play for the for passion what the Yankees represent and they opened the trench for us you know so we know what was a, a, a winning team because we saw it we didn't live in those times but we saw we saw documentaries we saw things where these guys were dominating baseball but yes they opened the trench for us so we can follow and we put I mean the New York Yankees put a great team together and they kept remember though you know, most of the time, the young boys, they were trade for some older players and players with names and all that stuff. And for some reason, thank God, thank God that they, uh, they, uh, they kept us together. And that's why, I mean, and with the rest of the teammates that we have, you know, they brought the, the great connect, the players like Paul O'Neill, David Kuhn, you know, uh, 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 Strawberry, Tim Reigns. Uh, and, and when you put a team together like that, come on, you know? And that's why, Jack, I believe that uh, we all should be proud of what we accomplished because it wasn't easy, guys. Mariano, you have had the opportunity to experience something that most players would dream of, of having it happen one time. You had it happen four times where you were on the mound getting the final out of a World Series victory. All of the months and years of work has now culminated, and you're the guy who just got that out that has sent your team 
to a championship. Is there a way for, for you to even describe to us what that moment feels like when you know that all of that work, and as you said, all of that brotherhood has now culminated in a championship? Man, Jack, I don't know if there are words that I can uh, express those moments, that I can use to express those moments. Uh, it's like you're expecting something. It's like faith, okay? Faith is something that you expect, that you certainly know that it's there, but you can see it. So when it happened, it's like, God, thank God, you know? I finally accomplished or I received by what, what I was hoping eight months ago. Yeah. Uh, 10 years ago, when I was in spring training for my first year as a, as a professional player. You know, and Jack, it's, it's something so beautiful when you do it, when you do it right. When you, when you achieve, when you, you know that it's done, it is finished, it's done, complete. Man, it's, it's sort of satisfaction. One thing I can tell you, though, being on that power and being in the bottom of that power, like in 98, I was in my knees, and then here come Joe Girardi, and then everybody. <laughs> I thought I was dying down in the power. <laughs> Mariana, we're, we're in the ninth inning of this interview, and now I get to be the closer. There you go. We're going to zip through a few topics, and actually it's going to be more about your teammates. I'm going to hit you with a name, and I want you to give me the first word, phrase, story, anecdote about that person that jumps to your mind. And I, I've got to start with your, your Hall of Fame buddy, Derek Cheater. What comes to mind when I say Derek Cheater? Determination. Derek was the term. Nothing will hold him back to achieve what he wanted to achieve. Jorge Posada. Passionate. Georgie, for me, I mean, I always wanted to have a culture like him that he always motivated you and get the best out of me. Passionate. How about Andy Pettit? Ah, I would say warrior. Although I know, Neil, they talk about, but to me, Andy was some type of uh, uh, unique individual pitcher. Then we know that when he was there, we had a great chance to win. How about Bernie Williams? Another one. I mean, I don't see, uh, I know that I play against great players, but uh, center fields, you know, kind of one like uh, Griffey. But Bernie, when he was in his game, forget about it. I don't see, I didn't want no one else but Bernie Williams in center field when I was pitching. And finally, Joe Torrey. Oh, man, uh, mentor, father figure, brotherhood, everything and beyond because this man allow us to be the men that we are. He helped us and he shaped us to be the men that we are now. Uh, he allowed us to make mistakes. And I love that man because that. He always allows to do what we think we can do and beyond, you know. I didn't know how, how, uh, how good can you be until you try, you know. He allows us to do that. So that man always will be in my prayers and in my thoughts, you know, because he's an amazing, amazing person. Mariano, when you get the opportunity to spend some time with, with some of the men that I just mentioned, and I know, for instance, several of them were in Cooperstown last summer for you. When you're all together in a room and, and it's just the, the boys, as you like to call them, just getting a chance to hang out one more time, what are those conversations like? What do they consist of? I mean, I mean, those conversations, it's like we, not, we haven't stopped seeing each other for so many years. You know, it's like we saw just yesterday. You know, that's how, that's how much we respect and we love us, you know, because, I mean, the way we treat ourselves, the way we went to our business. And uh, to me, those guys are uh, my family, my brothers. Uh, they literally, I mean, they don't have my blood, but for sure, somewhere in there is blood of mine in their veins because I mean uh, 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 that's something that uh, to the day I die they always will be in my heart because they are my family you know and once once we see each other it's like man you know the brothers got together let's do what we're talking about silly stuff you know what we're doing how heavy you're getting and all that stuff 
you know, how slow you're getting. And, and, you know, but that's, that's what family is. Jack, that's what uh, family, you know, you play around, you joke around, but, but you love each other. And that's what kept us. That's what we feel that uh, wherever we are, I mean, Derek is in Florida, George is in Florida, Andy is in, uh, in Texas, in Houston. I'm here in New York, Bernie's here in New York, but it's like we're still in the same place. You know what I mean? The, whatever it is, it's nothing can separate us. Even though we are separated, nothing can separate us. And when within we that, get together, it's, it's amazing. Within that brotherhood, Mariano, when Derek Cheater gets the call and is told that he is a Hall of Famer one year after you, do you remember the first thing you said to him and congratulating him about having his own place in Cooperstown? I mean, it's amazing, though. It's amazing because, I mean, I call and to tell the truth. I mean, I, I didn't got hold of him because I guarantee you was so many people calling him. And, 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 but uh, I can't wait, Jack, to see him and give him that big heart that he deserved, you know, and tell him, brother, congratulations. Because, I mean, uh, uh, like I said, I was blessed to play with players like Derek, uh, Andy, Georgie, in my book, Bernie, O'Neill, Tino, I mean, the list is long. And to me, all those players are Hall of Fame for me. You know, because I mean, they are unique individuals in my heart and to my family. So yes, I can't wait to see Derek and uh, hopefully we have Hall of Fame. Hopefully, if not, when we have it, because this is gonna pass, yeah, and we will have Hall of Fame event, and then when he, I can't wait for his induction and, uh, you know, giving that hug and kisses and tell him, brother, congrats, welcome to the club. Mariano, that's a great way for you to describe Derek Cheater and how the two of you are now together in Cooperstown, where you should be. It all started out together for you guys, going all the way back to 1995. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate you giving us a few minutes today, sharing your wisdom, sharing your knowledge, and sharing these, these fantastic baseball stories with us. Jack, thank you, buddy. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you guys. I love you guys. And stay safe, okay? Be home. Stay safe.